surrounded by scorching desert landscapes with virtually no rivers or streams, Saudi Arabia continues to sustain lush cities, artificial lakes, and enormous financial hubs. So where does the water come from in a place where rainfall is almost non-existent? Instead of waiting for rare rainfalls, Saudi Arabia creates its own water supply. It draws water from the sea, removes the salt, then pumps it through gigantic steel pipelines stretching thousands of kilometers like underground rivers buried deep beneath the sand. From offshore intake points to the faucet in every home, each drop of water must pass through a complex engineering journey. So how exactly has Saudi Arabia pumped billions of liters of seawater into their desert nation? To understand why Saudi Arabia must pull seawater deep into the desert, we need to look back at the original context. This is a country with almost no rivers, extremely low annual rainfall, and a territory dominated by hot, dry desert. For many years, their primary water source was underground aquifers buried deep beneath the surface. This was water that had accumulated long ago, when the region was wetter and greener than it is today. That precious source once even allowed them to grow wheat in the middle of the desert. But, the more water was pumped out, the faster groundwater levels dropped. Underground water could barely recharge, the land began to sink, and farmlands gradually disappeared. At that point, it became clear that continued dependence on groundwater would inevitably lead to a severe water crisis. Meanwhile, the population grew, cities expanded, and demand for water for daily life, industry, and agriculture increased steadily. Most people live along the coastline, while political and economic centers lie deep inland, far from natural water sources. The problem became very clear, either build an entirely new water supply system or accept a future of chronic water scarcity. From there, Saudi Arabia chose the harder but proactive path, using technology to turn seawater into fresh water, then building a massive pipeline network to distribute it across the country. From that moment on, artificial rivers began flowing through the desert. Behind every drop of water flowing from a faucet in Saudi Arabia lies a vast pipeline network stretching across the nation. The total length of the clean water transmission system has exceeded 14,000 kilometers, connecting coastal desalination plants to cities deep in the desert and transporting tens of millions of cubic meters of water each day. This is truly a nationwide artificial circulatory system. The heart of that system is enormous steel pipes. The chosen material is high-strength carbon steel, manufactured with high precision to withstand extreme water pressure and large temperature differences between day and night in the desert. Many main pipelines have a diameter of about 1.8 meters, wide enough for an adult to stand upright inside. This diameter is carefully calculated to allow very large flow rates without excessively increasing pumping energy. The pipe walls are coated with multiple protective layers. The inner layer uses materials specifically designed for drinking water, preventing metal contamination and reducing scale buildup. The outer layer resists corrosion and endures sand, wind, salt, and ground temperatures that can exceed 60 degrees Celsius. In many sections, the pipes are buried deep under the sand to reduce heat, impact, and protect against mechanical damage. Building such pipelines is no different from executing a massive linear infrastructure project. Along the route, a construction corridor several dozen meters wide is cleared. At the front, survey teams use GPS and measurement equipment to determine exact pipe placement points, avoiding unstable geology or steep slopes. Behind them, trenching machines dig channels, Specialized vehicles, lower pipe segments weighing many tons into position, and welding crews join the sections into a continuous line. A representative project, such as the pipeline from the Ras al Khair plant to Riyadh, uses two steel pipelines with diameters of about 1.8 meters, each nearly 270 kilometers long, capable of delivering around 900,000 cubic meters of water to the capital every day. Each weld is a critical point. Under operating pressure, even a tiny gap can create a powerful water jet, eroding soil, 
and damaging entire sections of the line. Therefore, after welding, joints are inspected using non-destructive methods such as ultrasonic testing and industrial X-ray imaging to detect hidden internal flaws, and only after passing inspection are they buried. The next challenge is moving water over long distances and uphill. In the Riyadh region alone, the clean water transmission network exceeds 2,600 kilometers, supported by multiple pumping stations and dozens of intermediate storage tanks. In the southwest, the system transporting water from the shukai Ik area inland stretches over 900 kilometers, crossing mountainous terrain and using many pumping stations and storage tanks to gradually lift water from sea level up to high plateau elevations. Inside these pipelines, water pressure is extremely high. If flow stops suddenly due to power loss or valve failure, the resulting pressure wave can create a water hammer effect, causing severe impacts on pipe walls. To prevent damage, pressure regulation tanks and relief devices are installed along the route, acting like shock absorbers that absorb excess force. Thanks to the combination of hydraulic design, pumping stations, pressure tanks, and pipe materials, these steel rivers can continuously carry water from the sea, across the desert, spanning hundreds of kilometers and overcoming elevation differences of hundreds of meters to reach cities deep inland. If you had to spend billions of dollars just to have daily household water, would you be willing to do it? Why? Before water can flow through steel pipelines across the desert, it must be treated out at sea. Saudi Arabia has built an entire belt of desalination plants along its coastline, including extremely large facilities such as Ras al Khair and Jubail. Ras al Khair alone can produce about 1 million cubic meters of fresh water per day, while Jubail 3A adds roughly 600,000 cubic meters more, enough drinking water for several million people. The process begins at offshore intake points. Seawater is drawn in through screens and intake grates that block debris, seaweed, and large organisms. The water then passes through tanks and filtration units using sand, gravel, and ultrafiltration membranes to remove mud, sand, algae, and most microorganisms. The goal is to clean the water mechanically, reducing suspended impurities as much as possible before it enters the core technological stage. The most critical step is reverse osmosis. Inside long pressure vessels, rows of semi-permeable membranes with extremely tiny pores are installed. High pressure pumps force seawater through at around 60 bar of pressure. At this level, only water molecules can pass through the membranes, while salt and other dissolved substances are left behind. In return, this process consumes a significant amount of electricity. One cubic meter of fresh water typically requires about three to four kilowatt hours. Newer plants, such as Jubail 3A, have reduced this to below three kilowatt hours per cubic meter by using energy recovery devices and integrating solar power. Saving even a few percent of energy at a scale of hundreds of thousands of cubic meters per day represents an enormous gain. Water leaving the membranes contains almost no salt but its mineral content is extremely low. If consumed long-term, this type of water is not ideal for human health. Therefore, the plant sends the water through a remineralization step, adding small amounts of calcium and magnesium, adjusting the pH level, then disinfecting it with chlorine or ultraviolet light. From this point, the water meets drinking water standards and is pumped into large storage tanks. At the same time, the system produces a stream of highly concentrated brine. In the past, most of it was diluted and discharged back into the sea. Today, Saudi Arabia is researching ways to extract valuable minerals such as magnesium and certain metals used in batteries and industry, reducing waste and minimizing environmental impact on marine ecosystems. Once the required quality is achieved, the water is pumped into the transmission pipeline network. This entire network extends more than 14,000 kilometers and can transport nearly 20 million cubic meters of water each day. From here, water travels deep inland, crossing mountains and deserts to reach cities and residential areas. 
Managing a system of this scale cannot rely solely on human inspection. Along many pipeline routes, fiber optic cables are buried in parallel. These cables transmit data and also act as sensors, recording vibrations, temperature changes, and acoustic signals along the pipeline. Even a small leak, machinery impact, or excavation activity near the pipeline creates abnormal patterns in the fiber optic signal. All data from fiber optics, pressure sensors, flow meters, water quality monitors, pumping stations, and storage tanks are sent to centralized control centers. Engineers monitor a digital model of the entire network on screens, identifying where pressure rises, flow drops, or temperatures behave unusually. Artificial intelligence helps detect abnormal signals, provides early warnings of leaks or failures, and suggests operational adjustments to save energy while keeping the system safe. Thanks to the combination of large-scale desalination plants, high-pressure membrane technology, carefully tuned remineralization steps, and intelligent monitoring networks, Salty seawater has been transformed into a stable, life-sustaining resource capable of traveling thousands of kilometers across one of the driest regions on Earth. When looking at an entire system of desalination plants, steel pipelines, and pumping stations stretching tens of thousands of kilometers across the desert, the first question is often, why would Saudi Arabia accept such enormous costs? It would seem much simpler to buy water from elsewhere or continue pumping groundwater as before. But for a country with almost no natural rivers and extremely low rainfall, depending on others for water means accepting a fundamental risk to the entire economy. A single political crisis or regional conflict could cut off supply immediately. For this reason, investing in water is not just a matter of expense, but a matter of national security. That said, desalinated water is clearly not cheap. In older plants, production costs could exceed one US dollar per cubic meter. With modern membrane technology, new projects have reduced this to around 0.5 to 0.7 US dollars per cubic meter. But that is still far higher than water drawn from natural rivers and lakes. In terms of energy, producing one cubic meter of fresh water using reverse osmosis typically requires about 3 to 4 kilowatt hours of electricity. This means a plant with a capacity of 1 million cubic meters per day may consume between 3 million and 4 million kilowatt hours daily, equivalent to the output of a large power plant used solely to produce clean water. That is the price Saudi Arabia is willing to pay to sustain cities and industrial zones in the middle of the desert. From here, Vision 2030 emerges as the next step in solving this equation. If the entire water system continues to rely on oil-based power, long-term costs and emissions would remain extremely high. Therefore, the goal is to gradually shift desalination and water transmission systems toward renewable energy, solar power, wind power, and green hydrogen. Mega projects such as NEOM are designed from the outset with the ambition of operating desalination plants on 100% renewable energy, aiming for net zero emissions across the full operational life cycle. This not only reduces long-term fuel costs, but also decouples clean water from oil dependence. At the same time, the country is redefining how it views desalination brine. After desalination, a stream of highly concentrated salt water is always produced. In the past, most of it was diluted and discharged back into the sea, wasting potential value and placing pressure on marine environments. Today, Saudi Arabia is investing in facilities that further process this stream to recover additional resources. Magnesium for metallurgy and lightweight materials, portions of lithium used in batteries, and various industrial salts. In other words, waste from water plants is gradually being transformed into raw material for new industries. When all these elements are combined, the picture becomes clear. Saudi Arabia is willing to spend billions of dollars to secure full water independence, accepting higher production costs per cubic meter in exchange for long-term stability. It then uses Vision 2030 to restructure the entire system reducing oil dependence, 
increasing the share of renewable energy, and turning desalination waste into valuable resources. They are not merely pumping seawater into a desert nation to satisfy present needs, but using the water system itself as a foundation for a future economic model that relies far less on oil. These massive steel pipelines do not carry only H2O molecules. They carry hope, prosperity, and the unyielding will of humanity. The story of Saudi Arabia stands as a powerful statement. Nature may impose the harshest limits, but human intelligence, when driven by determination and the right resources, will always find a way. They have built rivers in the heart of the desert, turning the impossible into everyday reality. We are living in an era where water resources are becoming scarce worldwide. Looking at how Saudi Arabia carefully values every drop drawn from the ocean, we are left to ask, have we truly appreciated the water we already have? If water is more precious than gold, then these steel rivers may be the greatest treasure of humanity in the 21st century. What do you think about this mega project? Could Saudi Arabia's model become a lifeline for other countries facing drought in the future? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can continue exploring the technological wonders shaping our world together with us. Thank you for joining us and see you again on the next journey.